Kelly McGivern and in this episode we're going to be covering five reasons, five reasons your art is bad. So grab your notepad and let's get our inspired. Number one is that your artwork is too cliched or rather boring. Yeah, we gotta spice things up. So your artwork is boring. It's either been overdone by you or it's been overdone by artists. Themes of love or Disney or uh, any sort of video game or landscape with like super cool glitter and clouds, pouring of your paint and then epoxying over it and adding some like seashells or like chunks of stuff, I don't know. What I'm saying is, is if you've seen it on social media, not on one account, not on one artist account because that's I mean, part, maybe part of an artist portfolio, but if you've seen it everywhere, it's boring! <laughs> Nobody cares. Like they do care for like the scrolling, like, oh, it's okay. But they're not going like, um, wow, I would love to see that in a professional art gallery. There is a huge difference between art for social media and what looks really cute for decorations. And art, that is art that is reflective of the human condition. So there is <laughs> a difference. So do not make boring art. If you are making the or um, so art that is either very similar to what a whole bunch of other people are doing, is a no-no, right? It doesn't mean that like, oh, I'm, I should make abstract art or uh, lowbrow or surrealist art because there's lots of surrealist artists. Well, no, because there's lots of surrealist artists and they all have their own style. You need to develop your own style. If your style looks exactly like every other individual's on Instagram that's trying to make cool things to get Instagram real likes, or TikTok view likes, whatever, um, then yeah, your art is it's boring. It's boring. Don't do boring things. Make it your own. Be the purple cow. That's a great book, FYI. Um, but yeah, well, the point is just to stand out and be different and have your own voice. And, and that is a, through a visual medium, right? It's a visual voice. Be yourself and be unique. Don't be boring. Um, and also, if you're painting the exact same thing, like if you're every single one of your art or artwork or whatever, digital paint, whatever your artwork is, whatever your medium is, ceramics, um, if every single thing looks the exact same thing, eventually people are going to be bored, right? It's like that's why people stop watching a certain TV series. Eventually, you're like, okay, every single episode's boring. Click through, right? Or it's becoming the exact same. Same story every single time. Days of our lives. Every, you can come back 20 years later, it's the same exact storyline pretty well. Same, it's a true story. Uh, <laughs> characters are different, but the story is the exact same. Anyways, um, my point is, is to do something that is going to allow you to be different. So uh, try, if you're doing the same landscape that has the same birds, but the, you know, the top, the, the sky is gold and the gray, well, ocean's blue, and then the next one is an owl instead of cranes, and the sky is purple and the ground is green, and it's the exact same thing every single time. It's going to be boring. So do something that's different. All right. Number two is that it lacks depth. Your art lacks depth. It means it's lacking uh, meaning. It's lacking you going deep into your own ideas. You're not being introspective. You're not going deep into the subject or topic or theme. You're not conveying any emotions. Um, your, uh, your intent is lacking depth. Your intent for your art is lacking depth. If you're making it um, for just to make a pretty picture for Instagram, that is lack of depth. Instagram itself has a lack of depth. <laughs> social, what's good for social media is not necessarily what the professional art world wants to see. And by that, I mean specifically people who are looking to show their art 
in a gallery setting. If your idea is not to make a gallery be in a gallery, then you want it to be for social media, that's a very different audience and then you should do whatever is good for clickbait and likes. Because you want people who have a very short attention span to stop on your picture. Whereas making it for a gallery, these people are looking to collect something, they are looking to be uh, have their emotions play with, they're looking to uh, understand the art in a different level and make a deep connection with it. So you need to offer them something deep to connect with. And that is how they're, why they're there to acquire the artwork. They're going to invest a lot of money in something and their time because they're going to spend the rest of their life, or at least until they, they resell it, with that piece. So it's a big investment. So you are going to, it's a very, whereas Instagram, for example, I'll keep coming back to Instagram um, as an example, social media changes. Um, but that is something that lasts with, stays with that person for seconds. So therefore, it's a very different audience. All right. Number three is that your art is bad because you have a lack of inspiration. So you're not going out and finding enough inspiring ideas and therefore your art in general is lacking uh, a lot of oomph. It's not, it's, not, it's not generating energy because you're not energized either. If you're just creating it like, oh, what should I do today? I don't know, let's paint an avocado. Why? I don't know. Well, it's just gonna look like an I don't know kind of avocado, isn't it? Right? There could, there could be a lot of different avocado paintings out there and some could have a lot of inspiration and depth um, and thought-provoking uh, uh, things going on. However, if you're just painting an avocado because you feel like just painting an avocado, well, if you don't have any oomph or inspiration in it, nobody's going to feel that either from looking at your artwork. So go out there and try to think about ways to really find new inspiration and ideas for your art, it's very essential. I'd say go on walks. Um, those really help generate ideas and get those creative juices flowing. It's really good. Uh, lots of people have, you know, from Einstein, who go on daily walks. Lots of people go on daily walks to generate ideas. It's a really powerful tool. Um, immerse yourself in nature. There's no better way to start daydreaming and just feeling like you're full of life and energy and getting inspired. Even by your own ideas, they just come to you when you're out in nature. Um, I think that is really, really important. But if you're copying and you're getting your inspiration by going on to Pinterest or going through scrolling through Instagram and looking at other people's work and then creating something that you've already seen or got inspired by online, that is not your own inspiration. So go find your own inspiration and ideas. I don't know. Go go immerse yourself in something that in your likes other than creating art. So if you're really into like hiking, then go on some hikes and get inspired. If you're into fishing, go out and fish and get inspired. Think about ways to get your own ideas. If you're in, if, you, if you're really passionate about uh, UFOs, go deep dive in UFOs. If you're really passionate about environmental ethics or environmental uh, change and, and awareness, then you should go deep dive in on that and get inspired by whatever topic makes sense for you so that way you can convey those messages within your art and also make it your own ideas not something that you already saw on social media or somewhere else because that's not making art that's just copying or being i'm inspired by there is being inspired by and then there's being way too inspired by just fyi all right now before i move on to number four i have a question for you and i want to hear your uh, qu uh answers qu answers in the comment section below the video. Started mixing up my words there. I would like to know what are your struggles when it comes to uh, improving your art? What are your struggles when it comes to improving your own art? Let me know in the comment section below the video. All right, number four is lack of quality. Your art is bad because there is a lack of quality. Either it's a ba bad quality of medium or material or it is bad quality and, or lack of quality in terms of your technical skill as an artist. So there's two things to think about there. One, it could be a lack of your technical skill, means that you need to do more practice in order to develop your technical skill. You need to come up with a consistent routine for creating so that way you can just genuinely make those 
1% incremental improvements to getting better so you can climb your own mountain uh, of making art, right? Of getting better at making art. Uh, there is no way to just go from start to master it without all the little steps in between. It's just daily, consistent showing up to your studio or workspace and creating. That's the only way you're gonna get better. So you gotta put in the hard work and time. There's no way around it. Um, so that is one thing is to improve your own quality just by uh, working on creating better art, increasing you know more layers, uh, more detail, more depth, uh, better subject matter, better focal point, just thinking about ways to make little changes at e with each artwork getting a little bit better to improve your quality, right? It's not, you're not going to make giant leaps, so just make your aim to get 1% better with every artwork that you create. The other thing is that it could be a lack of quality mediums and materials. They do matter. Uh, it is better to spend money on better mediums and materials when they're going to last a long time. A cheap bottle of paint is you're going to need a giant dab to make any progress and it's going to go quickly. Whereas something that's more expensive, you're going to need a teeny tiny dot and that's going to go for a very long time and use medium to help it go farther. It's going to be more vibrant, it's going to be richer, it's going to get the job done a lot better. There is no doubt about it. I think that there's a big difference even for tools like cheap to bring brushes versus having a ton of cheap paint brushes or like ceramic tools. It's garbage. Whereas having a few quality paint brushes or like clay tools, they're gonna to last a lot longer. They're gonna make better results. Um, they're gonna feel more balanced and better in your hands. So it's just a better tool in general. And you might be like, well, it's just a paint brush. Well, let me tell you, having a balanced paint brush versus one that's like really heavy on one side is really hard to work with. <laughs> like when you're painting, like, oh, I can't. <laughs> Breaky, right? Um, or like even just a clay tool, it's not gonna fit in your hand better, or it's just gonna be cheap made of cheap wood, it's gonna break and chip off. Like how how great is that if you have a cheap one, right? Whereas a good one's gonna last literally forever. So it's better just to have a few better quality things. Now, if you're looking for some uh well, actually, my favorite in terms of paint, my favorite brands that to work with are either Windsor and Newton, Gamblin and golden so i would stick with those Windsor newton gamblin and golden um for wood to for standard tools i would go to like a local pottery store and and invest in a few good ones versus getting like a those starter packs at like a hobby store that are like junk tools and they like break in like 10 seconds they're like so teeny tiny can't do much with them they're like okay well that's junk i don't want to use these so just spend your money and get quality, a few quality over a bunch of junk. That's my vibe for you. Now, if you're looking for some quality uh, painting supplies, art making supplies and tools, um, and even some books, artist books on creativity uh, to help get you inspired and to overcome that lack of inspiration and also the mediums to help you overcome that lack of quality materials and tools. Uh, I do have some links down in the description uh, below. They are Amazon affiliate links. That means that if you make a purchase, I do get commission. So just letting you know, um, but these are my ones I do use in my own studio. You can take a look at them in the link Links below in the description of this video. I'll have it all organized, like recommended artist books, recommended art tools and equipment, or recommended art supplies. Um, but again, like I do recommend like Golden, Windsor Newton, and Gamblin. I can show you, but that's all I use. This is Golden. I clearly use a lot of white. Golden, um, Love. This is acrylic. Acrylic. Um, I use Golden for acrylic a lot of the, all the time. <laughs> Windsor and Newton as well for acrylic but primarily I've been using a lot of golden paints um, also for I think I use mostly Windsor and Newton um, and Gamblin in oil paints so this is Windsor and Newton and this one's Gamblin which I've never opened I really want to use this color I want all these cute colors but like I say like you only really need your primaries in black and white because um, <laughs> you're just going to make your own anyways uh, Ranger Newton and Gamblin, super good quality. Uh, there's this one's artist oil color. I got some that are in a different one. And 
some some there's different levels of quality so make sure you get their higher levels they make probably like usually all the brands make like a student quality and uh a student quality and um a not student quality like a, a professional professional level quality don't get a student level quality it's gonna be like a watered down version it's cheaper for a reason um there's less pigment whereas this uh, artist quality or professional grade ones have more pigment um they are going to go farther then you if you want to water it down you add your own oils and medium to it so you pay, pay for the pigment um they go longer on your palettes you're only going to use like a dab like i've been using the same palette for this one painting i'm working on and there's not a lot of waste like i only put a little teeny tiny dab at a time um some of these bigger chunks that you see are like they're still wet i'm using them <laughs> so just keep that in mind and number five is that you have a lack of clarity in your art you yourself maybe don't have a clear vision of what you're trying to achieve as an artist what themes you're trying to convey what messages you're trying to convey what emotions you want to evoke in your viewers you maybe don't have a clear vision you're going from doing like painting still lifes to like focusing on just eyeballs to like making an artwork of a zebra then you're jumping over and like doing dragons and ceramics like you're all over the map and there's no consistent style. Like one day you're abstract, the next day you're neo-expressionist, the next day you're lowbrow. I don't know. But you, if you don't have any clarity and consistency in terms of the body of art that you're creating, your viewers gonna, and the audience is going to be very confused as well. So it's really important to work through uh, a theme or a message or emotions through a series of artworks. You're not gonna accomplish everything within one artwork, nor should you try, because I've been there, done that way back in the wind when I was a younger artist in art school. And my professors were like, Kathleen, we need to have a talk. And they, that was a good talk because <laughs> I was trying to throw everything at the wall in one go. And that was crazy and it looked terrible. Anyways, so after a ton of refinement and being more crystal clear, on creating an artwork, um, I determined that I would get to focus on a teeny tiny piece in just one artwork, then another piece in another artwork. That way, when you go to show uh, a few different artworks or a bunch of artworks, or even if you get like a gallery, you know, uh, a solo show, well, now you can create a narrative within that show where all your artworks are going to support each other within the show. And that is the real aim of a work. Right, so you're creating a series where all the artworks within that series are going to support each other, create a narrative, uh, and convey a message. And then the person can go move through the gallery and interpret that message or theme or emotion as they move through the experience. Um, it's all going to uh, speak to each other, create connections, and I think that's the best way to do it. So just really think about like for this series that you're going to be working on, what is that one clear focus. Then you go work through that. Then you're going to help with another stage. All right, now I'm changing ideas and changing vision, I'm changing focus. Now that means you're creating a new series of body or body of work that you're gonna convey, right? And then you, you start researching and deep diving into something else. And that's a really great strategy for just being clear um, and keeping that vision focused. Uh, now, if you want to work with different mediums and materials within a series that's okay the overall message and the thing that you're trying to pass to your viewer is still the same like right now i'm working on a series that has um, both paintings and ceramic sculptures but they're all within the same uh uh a series they're all channeling the same experience they're trying to invoke the same exper you know experiences that and adventures that have gone on so they're all within the same narrative vision they're clear they're under the same umbrella all right my friend that's it for this episode please make sure you like and subscribe to this video at 1000 subscribers i'm going to be doing an acrylic painting for you to celebrate that is going to be a man eating cupcake i'm so excited for that challenge and don't worry i will have milestone artworks for 10,000 and 100,000 subscribers so be sure to subscribe and share this video it really helps me out in growing this channel 
Um, as well, your next video to watch is art tips that actually improve your art. So make sure that you click the link above in the card above or hit that video um, link in the description below in the video and I will see you in that episode. <music>